Hi. Uh, you can hear me? This is a question for Will. Uh, I was curious about the, the video reel and uh, what you were doing there. What age were the students you were working with and, and how many hours a week were you working with them? Um, they were a group from between probably about 18 to 20 year olds. Um, and we had two 90 minute sessions. Uh, they then, obviously they could download Unity, um, but they're, they're it's kind of a problem where we are. We're kind of restricted with how much time students get access to the computer labs. So um, pretty much we gave them the three days dedicated to them to go in if they wanted to to work on it. So effectively they had three hours of teaching plus a development lesson with me and then three days before the things you saw in the show we were, were, were kind of created. So I don't know. I feel like it worked pretty well, hopefully. Cool. We've got another Hi. Uh Will again, but uh, I guess uh, any of you. Um, did, uh, am I correct in understanding that you uh, emphasized that uh, an original game idea was important in, in your teaching process? Well, the, the problem I was having was that people would just take the same process. So granted, there would be plenty of students who would you know, be able to abstract that information, but I could identify that there was a, at least a 50-50 split between those who could take the same information and break it down in their own minds into, okay, this isn't a door, this is collision detection, or this is a trigger. Um, but some of them have a difficulty with that, and I think that you know, a lot of students have, uh, a lot of people have a problem with, with abstracting information in that way, and I'm, I'm trying to address that problem, really. That's what I'm trying to do. I wanted to ask, will, uh as you approach your classes, and I think anybody who's taught game design knows that there's 10 times too much material to teach in a 14 or 15 week semester. So there's always trying, I'm always trying to balance uh, uh, teaching game design concepts, teaching programming concepts, teaching the Unity editor, and of course the students always want to get into content creation. Do you, do you have a, a formula or a breakdown that you try to look at how much of the course you spend on each of those modules? I mean, they could easily each be their own course. Well, yes and no. I mean, what I tried to do this year, and the, the problem with explaining it is kind of, I'm kind of right in the middle of it. So I've just done that two-week unit, and then uh, after Christmas, we're going into a period where we're going to do a lot more intensive stuff. But what I plan to do is to uh, take the same approach, the same sort of weekly approach, to um, forcing people to kind of learn it for themselves to some extent, which is where you know, the Noasis and Design 3 stuff comes in where students can kind of you know, find their own material online. The, the point behind what I was trying to do is to make sure that people start learning in a way that's going to um, encourage them to pick up and learn how to research for themselves. So where I'd offer up a challenge uh, or ask them to achieve a certain thing, I w I'm not always giving them all of the information and I'm relying on them to uh, learn things the right way. Part of uh, on the website um, was a kind of further reading uh, where I point them to script reference or you know any other particular part. So if I go to um, one of these modules as an example, what I was trying to do is to get them to say, okay, well, as soon as it loads up, uh, this is how to instantiate, for example. So you've learned that programmatic concept, but I was trying to force them to then put it into a context by themselves with the hope that they would actually see that context and do several other examples. Now, when I presented this to students last week uh, at work, what I found was that what they said it would be a lot more useful is to have several different contexts given to them as an example. So below that I have links to uh, script reference, component reference, uh, and modules that might be related to that as well as the code um, that they can take as they see fit. Um, so I don't have a particular formula, mostly because I think it's always changing and I'm always adapting to a particular group that I've got in. So I don't think you can, you can have a winning formula. And I think what I discovered when I really um, kind of started doing some research into this was that the formula that I had, and I've been teaching for about six years on, on various sort of interactive topics, um, was, was to keep things fairly similar and just see if it worked every year. And, and a lot of the time, it, it didn't work. You know, I, I'd, I'd follow through a series of lessons and not give time for feedback or, or not really you know, do anything that allowed any creative input and then in the first week of development, we then give them you know, a few weeks to make a game in a group. Uh, they really didn't know what to do, so they just kind of floundered without knowing, you know, without having the opportunity to have you know, a creative thought process. 
Um, so I'm kind of rambling at this point. So is that OK? Uh, if you had the room in your curriculum, do you think you'd start them with pure design first? I, I figure, I, I mean, progr I think programming and design are the two biggest challenges. The editor is actually, well, it's so good that it's, yeah. it's not that hard to learn. Precisely. And content creation is OK, too. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the reason that I came up with that uh, ideas before solutions and programming as a, as a problem is because they are. I, I don't feel like I've solved those yet at all. Um, I don't feel like uh, there's, th there's got to be a way of, of giving people examples of existing games without suggesting that they make them. I don't know what that is. Hopefully, we can get some ideas from, from you guys as we talk more. We're just going to hand over to Joe briefly, who's going to mention about uh, educational licensing, I'm betting. Thank you, Will. <laughs> well, first, uh, first and foremost, uh, I wanted to thank Will and Case uh, and Dan uh, to help uh, talk about uh, uh, Unity in the education space. It's really great. Uh, about a year ago, uh, I'm Joe Santos. I work with Unity Technologies. Uh, I think I met or emailed a lot of you here. Um, really, really excited to, to see the energy with, uh, with education and uh, with, with our technology. And um, last year, I think we had maybe 10 people <laughs> out of a, an outside forum just talk about education and unity. And uh, we listened to your feedback. Um, a lot of, a lot of the, the notes back to our team was, how do we get Unity Pro into the student hands? So what we're crafting right now is uh, an opportunity to uh, get Unity Pro into students uh, at an uh, analyzed rate, which is, uh, we were really excited to to uh, deploy this out, so um, definitely uh, we, we're, we're hearing your 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 feedback. So uh, uh, definitely, uh, uh, please see me if you have any questions on that. And uh, just wanted to make cool. a quick note on that. Thanks. Uh, this is for Will. Uh, I bought your book. It's fantastic. Thanks. Nice. <laughs> uh, I, but I'm curious. I haven't seen your website yet. Uh, okay. Is is this? Uh, on subscription, or is this just free online? No, this is this is just kind of there, so feel free. That's great, thanks. Um, it's well, basically within my within my area of teaching. Like I said, I do a few different disciplines, and uh, because I'm kind of more invested in this or more interested in this than, than the other ones, I kind of spent a lot of my own free time just working up this resource. Uh, it's part of a bit of research I was doing, like I said, um, and I really wanted to just create something that that looked at the video tutorial concept a bit differently. Because it occurred to me that a lot of people make video tutorials and just think that if they're showing someone doing something, then they'll be able to copy it and, and you know, extract a certain amount of knowledge from it. And I don't know how true that is. And I think that you know, in terms of the kind of book versus video tutorial thing, actually, although a lot of people perceive a video tutorial to be a lot better, there is a, a lot of development for it, and there's, there's a long way for it to go. Um, another thing that I'm working on uh, to kind of complement that is an actual game that, that teaches Unity concept as you play it. Um, it's kind of in a kind of early development stage, but it's something that people can jump in and play, and they will see various sort of you know, points during the game that tell them, you know, this is a rigid body, you know, you're firing a rocket, there's a rigid body is a particle system, so on and so on. Um, so I think there's, there's, you know, there's a lot of uh, mileage to go uh, in terms of actually coming up with a solution that, that works for everyone. Um, but yeah, this is free. I'm going to keep it free as, as long as I can and you know, keep working in the evenings to try and make some more content. But uh, it is just a site that I've made myself, so I can only do so much. And I just yeah. wanted to follow up. Um, there's the other, the flip side of Unity in education, which is using Unity uh, to teach other subjects or to teach science or, you know, to use it as simulations and educational games. Um, I'm interested in that. If anybody else is interested, I'm the guy with the red cap, so let me know. Well, yeah, I think it was really interesting. I mean, I saw the, um, did anybody else see the atmosphere presentation earlier? Yeah. Amazing stuff. Uh, I think that's got quite a lot of, uh, um, application with that because I mean that's something that's going to teach game design without getting into the code so you know I'm just promoting someone else's talk here but atmosphere was really really interesting in that context well I'm gonna uh, just quickly say promote my talk I'll be in the unity in the wild tomorrow uh, talking about what we're doing in New York so thanks cool